Chapter 51 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Juicy Hamburger Harold felt that this name is very strange. As strange as the name Yang Zhou, Fried Rice. But he heard the words ham, and immediately becomes interested, Boss Mike, then give me two of these. Me hell lip, hell lip, two. Hagard also placed his order. He was also filled with anticipation. The two brothers loved to eat meat. Although Yang Zhou fried rice is tasty, there was too little meat in it. All right, please wait a moment, Michael replied, turned around and entered the kitchen. Harold seated immediately on the same table as Moby, on the opposite side of the table. He smiled as he greeted Moby, Boss Moby, you are always the first to arrive every day. Today I am not the first to arrive. There is a human woman who was earlier than me. Moby shook his head as he replied. Good Hellip. Morning, Hellip. Little Hellip. Girl. Hagard looks at Amy and smiled. Big foolish, good morning. Amy nodded her head as she politely returned the greeting. She noticed the tusks that were sticking out of the mouth and asked in curiosity, your teeth are sticking out. When you eat, will it be inconvenient? Used hell lip. To it. Hagard smiled as he shook his head. Mine are even. Amy smiled and shown her teeth to Hagard, and looks very proud of her teeth. Hagar just grinned and sat next to Harold as he waits patiently for his breakfast. In a short while, Michael handed over three bags of hamburgers. One for each of them. It smells good. Is this the juicy hamburger? There is quite a lot of meat. Harold picked up the hamburger. The tantalizing smell of meat made swallow his saliva and gulped. Inside the bag was a white color bun. The bun was filled with a lot of meat. There is a mixture of fatty meat and lean meat, and it looks very appetizing. This is really different from Yang Zhou fried rice. I have never smelled such a unique scent of meat. This really smells incredible. Moby looked at the hamburger in his hand and could not help praising. He had just finished the last bits from the plate of Yang Zhou fried rice. I will try it first. Harold immediately widened the whole of the hamburger wrapper and took a large bite. In one mouthful, half of the hamburger is gone. The sweet and aromatic soft white buns were infused with the flavors of the hamburger meat. One mouthful, and the juicy sauces will flow out onto the tender, white buns. The soft and chewy meats contained within also release an assortment of flavors as it melted in the mouth. There were hints of wine, sweetness, and chewiness and saltiness in the meat. This made Harold's taste buds screamed in delight, and demanded more. But what really got Harold's attention is that after the meat was swallowed, it feels as if a hot stream of fire flowed down his throat. As if he had drunk a bottle of fury wine. His orc blood begins to rage, as if something in his bloodline had awakened. Roar. Harold could not help letting out an orc's roar. His roar was strong and mighty and even the table shook. E. Amy frowned. She was not happy about about Harold's behavior and immediately stretched out her hand. Before she could release a fireball, Michael had already caught her tiny hands, and smiled as he shook his head, indicating that she should not release the fireball. Michael looked on at Harold with curiosity. He knows that Harold did not roar on purpose. After all, the system had informed him that this hamburger can help to make the blood flow better, and awaken bloodline powers. It is more effective for the warring races than the peaceful races. As an orc warrior, Harold is more savage and fury in temper. He is used to wars and battles, even among his race. Hence, Harold's behavior could be excused. Michael wonders if Harold had awakened any bloodline powers, just like Amy. Harold's powerful roar had stunned Moby and Hagard. They were not expecting him to roar out of the blue. But when they thought about the plate of Yang Zhou fried rice, they did not think that it would cause any bad side effects. Rather, they were looking on at Harold with anticipation, as if he was the lab mice used to see what effects this dish will contain. 
After roaring, Harold felt as his orc blood was raging. When he recovered his wits, the first thing that Harold did is to glance at Amy. Luckily her hands did not have the dread fireball. He heaved a sigh of relief and grinned as he explained, Sorry, this hamburger tastes too good, and I could not control myself. The roar was not done on purpose. Boss Mike, this thing you made is totally rad. The effect is hell-lip. Is hell-lip. I felt that my blood becomes more active, and it feels like I am much stronger hell-lip, dot. And Michael smiled and nodded his head. Hearing that Harold had become stronger, Moby's and Hagard's eyes lit up, and they immediately took big bites of the hamburger. The taste is indeed superb, and they were intoxicated by the taste as well. In a short while, under the raging power of the blood, they could not resist roaring as well. Moby's roar is much quieter, and not very loud. But Hagard's roar is just as mighty, if not mightier than that's of his brother. After roaring, he sheepishly grinned at Amy, I'm Hellip, sorry. Big foolish, this is your first time. I will forgive you. But someone has to mind their manners. Amy nodded her head as she replied. I Hellip, will Hellip, Harold immediately nodded his head, then he took another big bite. This taste. It is so tempting and delicious. The chewy meat and the soft bun complemented each other perfectly. Is a godsend, a food after his heart. Harold was much smarter this time. After swallowing he used his large hands to cover his mouth, and he did not roar again. Hagard learned from his brother and also covered his mouth after eating. He was lost in the heavenly taste. For meat lovers like himself, this dish is really a slice of heaven. It is very yummy. Boss Mike, I want five more. Harold placed his bag on the chair and immediately informed Michael. There was a trace of red in his greenish dot black face, and he was visibility excited. After eating one hamburger, he could feel the beneficial feel the beneficial effect on his body. He feels much stronger. Me hell lip, also hell lip. 5. Hagard also showed his palm and held out five fingers. It is indeed tasty. But my old bones could not stand this excitement. I do not want any more. Moby shook his head. He felt the blood raging in his veins. Although it quickly calms down and is quite comfortable, he decided that he prefers the feeling of relaxation and warm when he eats a plate of young Zhou fried rice. Today is only a trial. Therefore, each of you may only order three hamburgers. I will adjust it a bit to make it taste better. Tomorrow, when I start selling this dish, there will not be any limits to the amount you can buy, except my stock. I have a limited inventory, and it is first come, first serve. Michael smiled and shook his head. Today is just a close-down event for his investors. He did not prepare a lot of hamburgers. Also, the time he took to season the meat is not optimal. The close-down event is also a teaser for tomorrow's launch of the new dish. He was not expecting a huge demand for the new dish, but if his regulars eat and love it, they would attract other customers to give it a try. Free, free is not enough. This hamburger is really tasty. Harold was a bit too rash, and immediately counter-proposed, Boss Mike, how much do you intend to sell a hamburger for? How about this? I pay double what you usually sell it for just to purchase two more. Chapter 52 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Michael looks at the excited faces of Harold and Haggard and was a bit hesitant. He was not moved by the offer of double the money, and he does not like this idea. But Harold and the rest had helped him a lot and invested in his business. If not for their investment, today Amy would not be able to eat the delicious hamburger. Michael finally smiled and nodded his head, this time, the new product is possible because of your investment. Therefore, there is no limit to the number of the hamburgers you can eat today. And you need not pay extra. Just pay the original price of 300 coppers for a hamburger. Really? Boss Mike, you are awesome. In that case, 
I want five more. It is the same for my brother. Harold's eyes lit up. This Michael is not like the other cunning humans that are out to take advantage of him. He rejected the extra money, while agreeing to sell more of the hamburger at the original price. All right, please wait a moment. Michael nodded his head, and immediately headed in the kitchen. Young boss, Bill please. Moby had finished eating. The plate of Yang Zhou fried rice and juicy hamburger had a unique effect when combined together. All the fatigue he felt from working all night was gone in an instant. After eating the hamburger, he felt even more alert. This is because, his blood seemed to flow faster, and deliver blood to his brain at a faster rate. As a result, his brain feels clearer and is not a groggy as he was earlier. When he placed the bag on the table, he suddenly noticed the drawing of the half-dot-elf figure on the back of the wrapper. He was surprised, yet he felt that this is natural. Although he had known Michael for only a few days, it is obvious that he loves Amy and is a good father. As a half-dot-elf, Amy does not have a mother by her side. But the stigma of being a half-dot-blood was not obvious from her behavior. Right now, Moby had never considered Amy as a lower breed or half. Blood. To him, Amy is bold, adorable, and filled with confidence. Seeing this logo, Moby was worried that it would create trouble for the restaurant. Not everyone is as open-dot-minded as him when it comes to half-dot-blood. When he considered Amy's fireball, he thought that Michael could not possibly be weak, and is a powerful and smart man. With these thoughts, he felt more assured. It is nine gold coins altogether. Amy walked over and thought for a moment as she worked out the price. All right, please deduct it from my investment. Moby smiled. N. Amy nodded her head, and walked to the kitchen and asked her father, Papa, Grand Dwarf Moby said that the bill will be deducted from his investment. Is that all right? Of course it is all right, I had written it down for them. Michael smiled. Then he took out two more plates. In each plate was filled with juicy hamburgers. For Harold and Haggard, the wrapper is more of a hindrance and annoyance. He just placed it on the plate and served it to them. Of course, the more important thing is, he could save five copper coins per bag, and his profits will increase. The plates could be left to the dishwashi, plusing machine to clean. Bye, Boss Mike. Moby smiled as as he said his goodbyes and walked out the restaurant. Boss Mike, your new dish is too tasty. If this continues on, I do not want to return to my tribe. Harold picked up the hamburger and took a big bite. He praised Michael's cooking skills. Then he closed his eyes as he enjoyed the feeling of the raging blood. This is more potent than drinking wine. While he was enjoying the taste of the food, he could increase his physical powers at the same time. In his opinion, there is nothing better than this. Michael smiled as he stood at one side. Being praised for his cooking skills is something that he likes to hear. Haggard nodded his head in agreement. He is not as fluent in the common tongue as Harold, but he communicated with Michael using a universal body language, by showing a thumb-up sign. In a short while, Conti rode his donkey and arrived. The distinctive sound of the donkey as it neighs is hard to miss. Conti had just entered the restaurant, and immediately his gaze zoomed in on the hamburgers that Harold and Haggard were eating. The delectable scent of the tantalizing meat filled the restaurant. Conti was hooked, and immediately placed his order, oh, it looked like the new dish is ready. Boss Mike, one portion of the new dish, please. All right, please wait for a moment. Michael nodded his head, and entered the kitchen. Conti's smile seemed to be permanently plastered on his face. No matter who he faces, he always had a smiling face. Good morning young boss. Conti sat down on his usual seat, and smiled as he greeted Amy. Smiley face uncle, good morning. Amy greeted back in reply. This reply. This uncle keeps smiling, as if he was wearing a smiley mask. The new juicy hamburgers are really tasty. This dish is like a slice of heaven. 
Harold turned around and informed Conti, chewed as he talked, highly recommended. Great, I look forward to trying it. Conti was filled with anticipation. In a short while, Michael exited the kitchen with a juicy hamburger in a wrapper. He passed it to Conti, your juicy hamburger. Conti accepted the burger, and his attention was captivated by the figure of the little girl on the wrapper. He smiled and asked Michael, Boss Mike, did you draw the young boss? Really? Amy was quite bored as she lies on the counter. As soon as she heard this, she jumps down from the stool and walked towards Conti and sneak a peek. Conti was quite tall, and she had to tiptoe to see the figure clearly. When she saw that, she was pleasantly surprised and very excited, Papa, Papa, is this really me? Did you draw it? That's right, it is you. Our restaurant has no one who is better to represent us. Michael smiled as he nodded his head, and stroked Amy's head. Papa, you are really incredible. It is very pretty. Amy rubbed her face against Michael's hand, and was very delighted. The three guests in the restaurant saw this and were smiling. This warm feeling of family made them envious. The rapper with the half-dot-elf little girl should become famous in the city of Sin. Conti picked up the hamburger. The white color bun was spilt in the middle, and filled with slices of meat. The minced meat was stuffed with some fat and some lean parts, and a unique sauce was enveloped on each slish and each slice of meat. This is the first time that he had seen anything like this. He opened his mouth and took a bite. The soft bun and the tender pieces of meat broke apart fairly easily. They were infused with the sauce used to cook the meat. The taste melts in the mouth, and tastes superb. Conti felt as he was in seventh heaven. After swallowing the hamburger, Conti could not help heaving a sigh of comfort. Oh! He quickly regains his wits and smiled sheepishly at the others in the restaurant. But to his amazement, after swallowing the burger, the blood in his blood sudden raged. The feeling was more intense than when he had woke up the morning and practiced his swordplay for an hour. In just one bit, his body is optimized and ready for combat. This dish is as amazing as the Yang Zhou fried rice. Boss, I want two more hamburgers. Conti had not even finished the hamburger in his hand, but he had already placed an advance order. All right, please wait a moment. Michael nodded his head, and returned to the kitchen. Today is going to be a good day. So will tomorrow. It looks like the juicy hamburger will be a huge commercial success. At first, he was worried about the effects of the juicy hamburger. Although the juicy hamburger is a bit strong in effects at first and made him uncomfortable, it seemed that the effect is not that bad. Right now, he is much faster when he cooks or creates a burger. The wrapper is quite convenient. Dot it means that the guests can eat out and is not restricted to the restaurant. Maybe, just maybe, it could make the restaurant more famous. Chapter 53 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Young. Boss, Bill. Please. Haggard looked at Amy and smiled as he held out two fingers, two. People. Big brother, are you treating me today? Harold's eyes lit up with surprise. He was very happy as he looked at Haggard. His brother had finally returned to normal. Haggard smiled as he nodded his head. Twelve hamburgers, total is. Thirty-six gold coins. Amy walked over and asked, Big foolish, are you paying the bill today? Deduct. From. Account. Haggard smiled and nodded his head. Oh. Amy nodded her head. Then she turned around and sighed as she muttered to herself, Aya, no coins to collect and count yet. When will this be completely deducted? I really want to count the money. Big brother. You really are my good brother. Harold patted Haggard's shoulders excitedly. Eighteen gold coins is not the issue, he had no problems paying this small sum of money. The issue is that the generous big brother he knows and loves is back. Haggard smiled and nodded his head, 
and took out the crowd.funding contract and placed it on the table. He used the orc tongue to communicate with Harold, I will be going back to the tribe. Today I will set off. This contract will be given to you. You can use the remaining amount left there. Consider it as if you have bought it. I bought it. No, didn't you borrow money from me to purchase it? And you also ate a lot, and now it is counted as I bought it. Err. So is this meal I treat you or you treat me? Harold looked at Haggard with a dumbfounded expression. Any feelings that his big brother had returned to normal have gone with the wind. Think of it as my treat. After all, it is deducted from my share of the crowd.funding document. Haggard thought it over, and nodded his head. All right, let's not talk about this yet. But why do you have to return to the tree so suddenly? We have one month to purchase everything we need. A lot of the things we were tasked to purchase are not ready yet. The weapons are not ready yet either. So why are you going back so soon? Harold asked. Stone Rock tribe and our tribe had another conflict with our tribe. Yesterday a fight broke out, and we lost two warriors. A small gold mine was also stolen. Father asked me to rush home, and lead the troops to regain the mine, as well as to kill the intruders to revenge our fallen comrades. Haggard's expression suddenly becomes very serious, and his smile disappeared. Looking at him now, no one will doubt he is a mighty and fierce orc warrior. The rascals from Stone Rock tribe attacked us again. Looks like they have to learn the lesson from last year. Big brother, let me go back as well. I will teach them a good lesson. Harold clutched his fist, and his veins pop out. No. You must stay here. We need the weapons. Your job is to bring these weapons back to the the tribe's safety. Haggard shook his head, and tapped Harold on his shoulder as he advised, also your injury from last year is not fully recovered yet. You must rest for a while before returning to the battlefield. I have already fully recovered. One swing of my heavy mace will spill their skull for sure. If you don't believe me, I show you. Harold wanted to stand up and demonstrate his combat powers to his brother. Dnav O.M. father said that Marcus is the leader of the troops this time. You are not his match. Plus, I want to personally break his neck with my own hands. Haggard's face is very cold and his fists were clutched tightly. Then he relaxed and let go. He smiled, tapped Harold on his shoulder, and picked up his heavy mace as he walked out. When Harold heard that name, his expression becomes complicated. He looked at the back figure of Haggard and said, Big brother, I go back with you. No need. You must purchase everything we need. In the next few days, I will return. Boss Mike's food is very tasty. Haggard shook his head. Then he turned around, looked at Amy, and switched back to the common tongue, good. Bye, little. Boss. See you again, big foolies.h, plus, Amy waved her hand, then she ran towards the egg and whispered something to it. Marcus, that damn orc. How dare he bring some warriors to raid my tribe's grounds. Darn it. Harold grit his teeth as he watched the figure of his brother disappeared from the door. Then he then he sat down helplessly. Tribal war. Michael thought. He looked at Harold. Michael McGonagall knows the orc tongue as well. The human's land is located near the orc's land. He had built his reputation on slaying thousands of orcs, and understands the orc's tongue. As for elven tongue, he was also conversational in it as well. That is how he seduced the elven princess and had Amy as his daughter. Although he was surprised, Michael will not ask directly, unless the guest is willing to voluntarily share with him on their own initiative. He is not that type who like to gossip. Boss Mike, one more plate of Yang Zhou fried rice, please. I want to calm down. Harold sat down for a while, and informed Michael. All right, please wait a moment. Michael quickly cooked a plate of Yang Zhou fried rice and placed it in front of Harold. Boss Mike, if someone used to be your brother, 
then he accidentally killed the woman that you love the most, do you think this type of rogue deserved to die? Harold picked up the spoon, likely. Michael nodded his head in agreement. These type of matters are complicated, and he reckons that Haggard himself does not know how to handle this situation. Gress is my big brother's fiancé, and grew up with him. Marcus is from the Stone Rock tribe, and is the same age as my big brother. At that time, our clan had not discovered the gold mine, and are on good terms with the Stone Rock tribe. The kids of these tuf these two tribes often played together. Both my big brother and Marcus are the son of the chieftains in their tribes, and often leads the kids to fight against one another. Their fighting powers are similar and they are also best friends. Then our tribe discovered the gold mines. Our poor village got rich overnight and everything changed. Stone Rock tribe wants a share of the gold mines. My father is willing to give them one or two small mines so that they will not go hungry. But they were not satisfied with this, and wanted half of the gold mines, as wanted the biggest gold mine as well. Of course, our clan will not agree to these unreasonable demands, and refuse to give the smaller mines as well. Thereafter, our two tribes had been at war for decades, and there were causalities on both sides. During one of the skirmish, my big brother met Marcus. Both of them are the strong new generation of warriors in their tribe. Neither of them had a clear victory over the other. That battle was no different. But one of the orcs from the Stone Rock tribe tried to cheat, it was supposed to be a fair combat, but that orc tossed a stone cleaver to Marcus. Gress was in a panic and rushed in, and took the blow intended for my brother. Harold sighed, actually I saw that battle. Marcus wanted to discard that blade, but he had never expected that Gress will rush up and impaled herself on the blade. Chapter 54 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Harold's story is told in a simple way, and the tragedy also made others sigh. This is a tragic story. Michael gently said. Yes. For many years, Marcus did not appear in the Stone Rock tribe. No one expected him to lead a group of orcs to raid the gold mine. My brother and him will have a showdown, once and for all. Harold nodded his head. Harold was a bit crestfallen. When he was young, he often followed his brother and Marcus and played with them together. Marcus would often take care of him. Right now, because of the mine, the two tribes are at war. Who had expected that the friends of yesteryear become the foes of today? Forget it, sooner or later, they will have to sort out the mess themselves. From the time that Gress fell, I know that there will be a blood debt between the two of them. Only one may live. Harold took up the spoon, and eat his plate of Yang Zhou fried rice. He did not say another word, Boss Mike, Bill please. Conti smiled as he greeted Michael. All right, it is three hamburgers, and nine gold coins. I will subtract this amount from the contract. Michael smiled and nodded his head. Great. Conti stood up, picked up his long sword, and tapped Harold on his shoulder as he passed by on the way out. Dot, brother, he will win. Dot. N. Harold grunted, and continued to eat. Conti looked at the counter and discovered that Amy did not greet him goodbye. He was a bit disappointed as he left. Very quickly, other customers arrived. Some of the guests heard that there is a new product and insist on trying it. 300 coppers are much cheaper than 600 coppers for a plate of Yang Zhou fried rice, but compared to the prices of other food, it is still quite expensive. By now, Michael had become used to the strange moans, grunts, roar, burps as the guests took the first bite of the hamburger. He chose to ignore these sounds. All his customers could not resist this juicy hamburger taste, one bite and they are hooked. The morning business hours were soon over. Michael walked up to the door, turned the sign to, sorry, we are closed, and locked it. Then he cleared all the plates on the table and placed them in the dishwasher. He was about to wipe the tables and mop the floor when he heard Amy's excited cries. Papa, come over here, quick. The ugly duckling is going to hatch soon. 
Amy excited cries rang out. Her voice was surprised and elated. Now. Michael was surprised. He walked towards the counter and squatted down beside Amy. The egg had sha sha sounds coming from within. Unlike yesterday, the sound is clearer and more frantic. It is as if the life inside wants to be hatched. Amy, did you whisper anything to it? Michael looked at Amy with curiosity. This is just an egg, and yet it seemed to be very scared and desperately wants to be hatched. I encourage it. Amy nodded her head innocently. Then how did you encourage it? Michael was puzzled. Ugly duckling, be obedient and come out. Or I will use my fire to to burn you. I am super fierce. Amy clutched her fists as she took on a fighting stance and earnestly demonstrated. Michael's jaws dropped. What kind of encouragement is this? This is a threat, pure and simple. No wonder the bird and the egg keep scratching against the eggshell as it frantically tries to hatch. Papa, does it thinks that I am lying to it? I had called so long, but it still is not willing to come out. May I use my fire to burn it for a while? Amy looks at Michael and asked. Beads of perspiration dripped down from Michael's head as he despaired for the egg. If she really used her super hot fire to burn it, then we will end up eating a boiled egg instead. Michael was thinking of how to teach Amy the virtue of patience when a loud crack suddenly appeared on the surface of the egg. Amy and Michael looked at each other in surprise. They widened their eyes as they stare at the crack on the egg surface. Ugly duckling, quickly come out. I know you are ugly, but I am pretty. Amy looked at the egg as she encouraged it to hatch. She is as acid tongue I was. This must be my genes. Michael looked at Amy and thought. Her acidic tongue is natural and savage, and needs no one to guide her. Amy can be described as a premium piece of jade. If he were to guide her and teach her, with her adorable face and soft voice, her tongue could make people annoy yet they could not bear to be angry at angry at her. As a result of being transmigrated here because of his acidic tongue, Michael was much milder now. He may occasionally be savage to the system, but he is nice and polite to the inhabitants of this world. It is not that there is nothing to criticize about this world's food. He could easily criticize their food, but what he afraid of is that he would die and transmigrate into another world. He could not bear to leave Amy. But Amy is different from him. She can be savage, and assign people names, but no one could bear to be angry at her, and forgive her quickly because of her age. Therefore, she need not worry about this issue. Looks like it is time to teach her how to best infuriate people with the power of words alone. Michael nodded his head as he looked at Amy. Amy had totally memorized the multiplication table. She is now earning the decimal addition and subtraction, and well as calculating the two-digit multiplication table. Most of the basic and common everyday maths that she would use in her daily life had been learned. Amy is a bright girl and learns very fast. There are more and more cracks on the surface of the eggshell. And the cracks spread all over the shell of the egg. Very quickly, the cracks covered almost all of the eggshell. Michael was looking on with anticipation. What will this egg hang? It is hatched from an egg, and is placed in a high cliff. Therefore, it is highly likely that this is a bird's egg. Judging from the size from the size of the egg, it should not be just an ordinary bird. Maybe it is a powerful beast. Ugly duckling, I count down from three. If you do not come out, I will release the fire. Amy had no patience whatever and looked at the egg. Then she lifted up her hands. Pop, the top of the egg cracked, and a hairy, small head immediately popped out from the shell. Its half-dot-opened eyes looked around in fear as it glanced left and right. Then it looked at Amy, and opened its mouth and cried, Meow, orange cat. Michael's eyes almost pop out of his head. The creature inside the egg is an orange and white color kitten. Its head was still covered with an eggshell, and its eyes were not fully opened. 
There were traces of egg white on its fur, and looked at Amy with its eyes half closed. This is really adorable, Woa. So cute. Amy blinked her eyes in surprise. She wanted to pat and pick up the kitten, but she withdrew her half-stretched arms and looked at Michael in puzzlement, Papa, didn't you say that the ugly duckling will become a swan when it grows up? Then why does it not look like a roast swan? Cat in an egg meow. Thank you for reading this at http forward slash forward slash prosperous food. Calm meow. We have food and now we have cats. Meow. Per dot fect, what's that? You say cats do not hatch from eggs. Heard of happy from fairy tale manga. Cats can fly and hatch eggs on cliffs. Happy from fairy tale mage guild said so. Chapter 55 You are listening at novel full dot audio. Maybe this is a fake ugly duckling. Michael looks at the orange and white kitten that was meowing at Amy. How to explain this? A cat that hatched from an egg. This is something that he had never heard of. After thinking about it, maybe in this world, the egg-hatched cats are more common than the live-birth cats. This is, after all, a fantasy world. Of ten orange tabby cats, nine are fat, and one is super fat. On Earth, he had a dog and a cat. That cat is also an orange tabby cat, and it is as fat as Garfield. Looking at the half-open eyes of a kitten that is no bigger than the palm of his hand, Michael almost could not resist the temptation to pat it. This kitten is ultra cute. BL.net, but. It hatched from an ugly duckling egg. That is an ugly duckling egg, right? Then it must be an ugly duckling. Amy nodded her head confidently. She looks at the kitten with a hint of disgust, you are really ugly. You have two more legs and does not know how to swim. In future, your name will be Ugly Duckling. Air. Maybe we can give a nicer name. For example, Orange Orange, Little Orange, Big Orange etc. Michael tried to change Amy's mind. This is obviously a cat and not a duck. To name it Ugly Duckling is a bit. Too much. No. Papa, it is definitely Ugly Duckling. You cannot change a creature's name as you please. Amy looked at Michael and shook her head. Meow, the tabby cat seemed to understand what Amy was saying, and meowed in protest as it shook its head. It seems to indicate that it does not like this name. And, I know you like this name, right? Amy smiled and nodded her head, totally disregarding the opinions of the tabby kitten. She reached out and took away the eggshell on top of its head, and looked very strict as she called out, Ugly duckling, if I call your name you must respond. From now on, before you become a white swan, I will treat you well. Saying this, Amy drooled and salivated again. Meow, the tabby kitten immediately gave up, and meowed in response. So it be, this cat is named Ugly Duckling. Michael pitted the tabby kitten. In his daughter, Amy's eyes, regardless if it is a griffin, a phoenix, or another creature, as long as it hatched from the ugly duckling egg, it must be an ugly duckling. And this is Amy's pet. She had the right to decide the name of her pet. But this tabby cat will probably never become a swan. Therefore, Amy could never realize her dreams of making it fat and eating roasted swans. Frankly speaking, Michael doubted that this is an ordinary tabby cat. After all, the vendor informed him that this egg was taken from a steep cliff. The rope marks on the vendor's hand and body indicated that he was not lying. Try as he might, he could not discern anything about this kitten, other than its superior intelligence in understanding human speech. It does not have wings on its back. Who knows what will it becomes when it grows up. Maybe it is a winged tiger. Maybe a sphinx. Or a dragon cat. Then Michael shook his head and discarded these thoughts. It is still too early to tell. Who cares what what it really is? As long as Amy likes it. He just hopes that this cat will not be too fat. This kitten looks like an ordinary kitten, except that it is a bit bigger, 
and looks like a cat that is about two weeks old. It is also a bit more active than most kittens that had just been born and immediately tried to get out of the eggshell. But it is still too small and weak, and could not get out of the massive shell on its own. It just stared at Amy with its large, blue eyes in a pitiful expression, and meowed twice, as if it is begging for help. The kitten seemed to have acknowledged Amy as its owner. I guess I have no choice but to help. Amy's mouth may seem unwilling to help, but her body is honest, she reached out to grab the kitten. Hold on, we must first clean it. Michael immediately called out, and took a clean towel. He gently lifted the kitten from the egg and rubbed it clean. Then he used the towel to wrap it so that it will not too cold. Only its head was sticking out, as it glanced at Michael and Amy. Papa, I feel that it looks delicious. Amy looked at the kitten that was wrapped in a towel and her eyes lit up. Oh, like a spring roll. Michael wants to laugh out loud. This girl is obsessed about food. Meow. Meow. The kitten seemed to understand Amy's words and immediately cried out in panic. It struggled to get out of the towel. Ugly duckling, be good, I will not eat you now. Be good, and do not be afraid. Amy afraid. Amy patted it on its head, and smiled as she stroked it. The kitten calmed down almost instantly and fell asleep. Let it sleep, I need to prepare some food for it to eat. Michael informed Amy. Looks like it took a lot of effort to hatch. It should be hungry once it wakes up. The ugly duckling is really lazy. I just patted it and stroked it for a while and it fell asleep. Amy reluctantly withdrew her hand that was stroking the cat, and looked at her father, then what should we feed it? Rainbow fried rice. No. A newly born kit. Ugly duckling could not eat rainbow fried rice. It must drink goat or cow's milk. Let's go shopping and purchase some milk for it. Michael shook his head. The super fat tabby cat that he had on earth is raised by him when it is only a kitten, and he is experienced in caring for cats. System, do you sell milk bottle? Michael asked. I am not a department store and do not sell baby products. The system replied. I do not have much cash now. You better be honest about your prices. This kitten will soon be able to lick from the plate itself, and I no longer need the baby bottle. Michael remains calm. High dot quality milk bottle. Buy one and get one free pet collar. Only five gold coins. The system immediately replied. If you give me two pet collars, I will purchase one set. Michael bargained. High dot quality milk bottle, two pet collars are delivered into the first drawer of the counter table. Please check. The system voice rang out. Michael opened the drawer and found a new feeding bottle and two lovely pet collars. As for why Heger why he did not purchase the milk from the system, he thought that the system will not sell any ingredients to him that is not used for cooking. Even if it does, the price of the products from the system would be very high, and the milk probably comes from exotic places. Right now, he does not have much cash on hand. He needs to save money to purchase an increase in his body constitution. He is still too weak and he really wants to carry Amy. He should be more careful in his spending money. All right. Amy nodded her head in agreement. She carefully lifted up Ugly Duckling and placed it into the basket used to hold the egg. The eggshell had been removed from the basket and it would serve as a sleeping place for the kitten. Then she covered it with a towel and held Michael's finger as she proceeds to go out with Michael. On the way out, she looked back at the basket and asked with a worried look, Papa, if we go out and Ugly Duckling wakes up, will it be afraid? That ugly duckling seemed to regard me as its mother. It should not wake up so fast. Michael shook his head. It should not take long to purchase some milk. Amy's instincts are really sharp. She could sense that the ugly duckling had already acknowledged her as its owner and trust her. Despite her fierce exterior facade and words, it is fairly obvious that Amy really loves and care for her first pet. 
All right, then we better go out and come back quickly. Amy agreed, and immediately pulled Michael's fingers as they head out of the door. Chapter 56 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Michael and Amy return very quickly. Other than teasing charcoal black and green beans when they passed by the potions shop, they purchased a jar of goat's milk. It costs only 20 coppers, and the vendor even gave them a bamboo jar. Michael could not help feeling that he is too greedy. As soon as they opened the door of the restaurant, they could hear the frantic meowing of the kitty. Ugly duckling, do not be afraid. You are too ugly and will frighten off all intruders. So you have nothing to fear. Amy immediately rushed up and consoled the kitty. This consolation is really fresh and unheard of. Michael grinned as he entered the door and placed the milk on the table. The clothes within the basket were scattered on the floor. Its two paws were on the basket and looked at Amy with its big kitty eyes that were almost in tears, if as if it abandoned. All right, all right, I will bring you out with me next time. Sigh, there is no help for it. Amy sighed and stroked Ugly Duckling's head. Ugly Duckling loves and welcomed the stroking, and rubbed its head against Amy's hand as it purred and closed its eyes in delighted. It stopped meowing. Michael also grinned. Although Amy's mouth was filled with words like eating it when it grows up, he was sure that she would become attached to it and would not eat it. He does not want to scold Amy for her words and adopt a wait-and-see attitude. If Amy could value her pet and other animals naturally, this would be the best, just like she could make friends with Charcoal Black. As for her fixation on eating roasted swan, Michael was sure that it is just a childish desire that she would outgrow one day, and nothing more. She would not eat the cat once she and the cat had bonded together. Michael took out the milk bottle that he had purchased from the system into the kitchen, and boiled the bottle to kill germs. Then he heated up the milk and poured it into the milk bottle. He placed a few drops of the milk onto his hand, and make sure it is warm but not scalding hot. Satisfied, Michael left the rest of the jar into the fridge and took the milk bottle out. Papa, what is that? Amy looked at the milk bottle in Michael's hand and asked with curiosity. The milk bottle was in a clear glass and there is even a soft rubble thing resembling a suckle on top. What could this device be used for? Meow, ugly duckling's eyes were transfixed on the bottle, and it seems to smell the milk. Its eyes become sure, plus New York-like stars as it licked its nose. From the way, it reacts, it is very hungry. This is milk bottle. It is used for feeding babies and little animals. Just like this. Michael smiled as he placed the suckle into the mouth of Ugly Duckling. The little cat quickly begins to suck the milk and lap it out hungrily. Some white color milk even leaked out from the corner of its mouth onto its fur. It looks like it was enjoying its meal. The goat's milk had less lactose compared to cow's milk. As a kitten that is born in the wild, it should be adapted to goat's milk. Milk. Michael thought. If this does not work, then he will try to purchase some cat milk powder. But the price of this product is a lot more expensive. So cute. Papa, may I feed Ugly Duckling? Amy's eyes lit up and she looked at Michael with anticipation. Of course you may. But Ugly Duckling could not take a bath yet. If it is dirty, we will have problems with hygiene. Therefore we must first make it wear a collar. Michael passed the milk bottle to Amy and took a small collar from the drawer. He was intending to take away the bottle and put on the collar first but the kitten refused to let go of the milk bottle. In the end, Amy had no choice but to hold the bottle high, and while it is feeding, Michael placed the collar around its neck. Then, Amy, you feed it. One bottle is enough for it. I will prepare the ingredients for this afternoon business. Michael informed Amy. All right, I will feed it. Amy nodded her head. She looked at Ugly Duckling that was enjoying its meal with relish and asked, Is it really that tasty? Ugly Duckling seemed to have high intelligence and understood Amy. It continued to suck the milk while it nodded its head. 
Michael washed his hands and took out some slabs of meat. He sliced them and put them into a large bowl to marinate. The most important thing about the juicy hamburger is, of course, the hamburger patties. The meat that he had marinated in the middle of night should be enough for today and maybe, tomorrow as well. By tomorrow morning, it would be the optimal time to cook it to maximize the taste the taste of the patty. Therefore, he needs to marinate the meat so that he had enough meat to make more patties for the day after tomorrow. In this way, he could ensure that the taste of the dishes is optimized. At the same time, he wanted to ensure that the taste of each hamburger is consistent. When Michael had seasoned and marinated the meat and placed it in the fridge, he decided to check up on Amy. As soon as he left the kitchen, he was surprised to see Amy sitting on the floor and happily sucking the milk from the milk bottle. Ugly Duckling was in the basket and looked at Michael with its big, pitiful eyes, then looked at Amy, and almost cried. Sigh, I should not have let a foodie feed the animal. She even snatched the cat's food. Michael could not help sighing and giggling at the irony of it. Amy, you ate its meal, then what is it going to eat? I am worried that it eat too much and will be too full. That's why I tried to help it eat a bit. Amy sucked one more mouthful and looked at Ugly Duckling, is that right, Ugly Duckling? Meow, Ugly Duckling cried out and looked at Michael pitifully. It waved its little tail. This kitty does not even have any pride. Michael looked at Ugly Duckling and grinned. He used to have a fat cat. It was very proud and picky eater, and will only eat if the food is placed near its mouth. Amy, do you like the taste of goat's milk? Michael asked Amy who was enjoying the milk from the milk bottle. N.N., it tastes good. Amy nodded her head. All right, her head. All right, then I will also prepare one for you in future. Michael smiled and nodded his head. In the past, Amy seldom had the chance to drink milk. These few days, he was focused on his business, and forgot about it. He purchased another milk bottle from the system. Michael had no choice, he could not have his daughter and the cat share a bottle. Then he warmed up one half a bottle for Ugly Duckling and one half a bottle for Amy. When he saw the sight of his daughter and the kitty sucking the milk from the milk bottle at the same time, he felt warm in his heart. New task. Sell 1,000 juicy hamburgers in 10 days. After completing the mission, new dish, soya bean curd, will be unlocked. So far you have sold 48 hamburgers. 1,000 again. System, can you have something new? Your tasks are all boring. Michael pouted. This time he had heard the difference in tasks. The system had changed the task from selling the ingredients to selling the products. After the last crowd.funding attempt, the system had become smarter and it is becoming more difficult to exploit it. Selling a number of the dish is to allow the name of the restaurant to spread far and wide. Please do not try to exploit any loopholes to complete the task, work hard, and manage the restaurant is the purest and surest path to the root of becoming a god of cooking. The system begins to preach. All right, this does not seem to be hard. But I am more curious about this. The soya bean curd that you have mentioned, are you talking about the sweet or savory one? Chapter 57 You are listening at novelfull.audio Soya bean curd had a cult-like following for the two types of soya bean curd. Sweet or savory? These two are the biggest factions in the war for soya bean curd, but they are by no means the only one. There is even a spicy soya bean curd faction, but this faction is very small and insignificant compares to the legions of fans who love either sweet or savory soya bean curds. As soon as this matter is discussed, Regardless of the faction a person support, he or she will want to destroy a person from the other faction. This creates an ongoing war regarding soya bean curd that exists even to this day. Michael loves the savory flavor and flavors a slightly salted taste of soya bean curd. Some vegetables, shrimps, fungus, garlic and a bit of soy sauce is added the soft and tender soya bean curd, it is simply irresistible in the chill of the winter. 
As for sweet soya bean curd, what the F asterisk asterisk K is that. 1. Michael did not have any ill that will towards the sweet soya bean curd. He would not draw swords without a valid reason. But he does feel very annoyed when he noticed stalls that only sell the sweet soya bean curds. He still recalled the time when he ate at a well-known restaurant on earth. It was in winter and he wanted some soya bean curd to warm himself up. But they had the gall to serve him the sweet soya bean curd. They did not have any other types of soybean curd. That time, Michael did not create any harsh or savage reviews for this shop. All he did is to take a photo of the restaurant entrance, took a name card to note down its address, then insert a photo of a mouth dot watering savory soya bean curd with the caption. In the chill of the winter, there is nothing like having a bowl of savory soya bean curd here. This is really comfortable. This is an advertisement for his hundreds of thousands of foodie fans who love to eat. This is also the first time that he did not even say a single word of criticism. He even sounded very positive about it. As a result, that restaurant was swamped with foodies demanding to eat the savory soya bean curd that it does not have nor sell. It had to face the wrath of these foodies. To pacify them, the restaurant quickly come up a savory version of soya bean curd and even managed to earn a good profit. Due to this event, the boss of the restaurant had lost all credibility, and end up selling the restaurant. He opened a bar instead. When he thinks about his past actions, Michael suddenly felt a slight feeling of remorse and regret. Perhaps, he was too much, and his being transmigrated into this world is karma. As a savory type, Michael wants to sell the savory soya bean curd, just for his own selfish desire, and make savory soya bean curd popular in this world. But does Amy like the savory type or the sweet type? Michael suddenly thought of something very important. Looking at Amy that was sucking the milk bottle happily, he was lost in thoughts. He was unsure if his precious daughter loves the sweet or savory type of soya bean curd. If you complete the task, you will unlock the sweet and savory type of soya bean curd at the same time. The system system considered for a while before replying. Oh, that's great. Michael nodded his head. Right now, he was worried that his daughter would like the sweet type. But if Amy joins the sweet soya bean curd faction, what could he do? Amy is his daughter and he would have no choice but to accept and forgive the sweet soya bean curd faction, despite his personal tastes. Right now, Michael is also the boss of a restaurant. He should stop thinking like a customer. If Michael only sells one type of bean curd, the people who like the other type will become unhappy. Although this world does not have soya bean curd, as a restaurant owner, Michael should allow his customers to eat what they like. His mindset is slowly changing from a food critic to that of an enterprising restaurant owner. There is nothing he likes more than seeing the delighted face of his customers. All right, I will quickly sell 1,000 juicy hamburger. Michael nodded his head. He hesitated for a bit, then tried, System, I desire to eat the savory soya bean curd very much. Can we have a pre-sale? Michael's head was swamped by a series of dots. Then it finally exploded in a raging voice, Master, please focus on your task. Respect the system. At the same time, the voice seemed to be cracking with electricity. Oh, I had offended it. I had offended it. If not for the fact that the system communicates directly into his brains, he wanted to cover his eyes. He did not expect that the system is so easily provoked. Frankly, he was just pushy, plusing his luck. Right now, he needs to make a name for the restaurant. Something that is easy to make and could and could be taken out to eat is the best choice. In the next few days, he would be focused on promoting the juicy hamburger. Michael looks at her daughter and the cat as they happily drank the milk from the milk bottle. He entered the kitchen and saw some milk on the stove. He suddenly recalled that the taste of goat milk is not so nice, especially before it is homogenized. But when he saw the two of them drinking the milk so happily, he could not help taking a sip in curiosity. Michael's eyes lit up. 
This milk had a strong scent that hints of sourness. But this did not affect the taste. Instead, it only whets his appetite. He gulu 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 and finished the half bowl of milk. The scent of the milk lingers in his mouth and teeth. This goat milk tastes better than the cow milk on earth. No wonder the two of them love this taste. He did not anticipate that this world's goat milk tastes different to that of earth's. Looks like from tomorrow onwards, I should buy one flask of milk every day. Michael inserted the marinated meat into the fridge. Right now, all three of them need some calcium for healthy bones and are growing. Having some milk every day is not a bad choice. Ever since Ugly Duckling had hatched, Amy gained a new companion. She would smell more often as she played with it. But the kitten is very young and easily tired. It soon fell asleep again, and Amy carried it to the basket and tuck it. During lunchtime, Ugly Duckling was carried by Amy, and watched on as Amy enjoyed the fried rice. It meowed a few times and looked very times and looked very pitiful. Papa, can Ugly Duckling eat the rainbow fried rice? Amy could sense what Ugly Duckling wants and asked her father. Right now, it can't. You need to wait until it is a bit bigger, and had grown some teeth. Michael shook his head. This orange tabby cat had just been hatched from the egg. It could not take solid food yet. Meow meow dot. Ugly Duckling seemed to understand Michael's words, and immediately bare its fangs and milk teeth at Michael. E. Michael looked at Ugly Duckling's teeth in surprise. This world cat is really strange. How could it be born with teeth? Michael examined the small teeth and shook his head, even if you have teeth, you cannot eat it now. You need to wait for a few days. Meow. Ugly Duckling bowed its head in unhappiness and snuggled against Amy's chest. It looked very angry at Michael and refused to face him. It is useless to be angry. You are not allowed to eat. But if you really want to eat, dot Amy glanced at the ugly duckling that had raised its head as it looked at her. Then she smiled evilly and placed a spoonful of rainbow fried rice into her mouth. Then you can watch me eat. Ugly duckling meowed and looked like it was crying. It just sat in Amy's arms and looked very miserable. Michael laughed and shook his head. Just watching their antics would amuse him to no end. After eating his lunch, Michael cleared the table and heated up two more bottles of milk and gave them one each. This is to prevent Ugly Duckling from snatching Amy's food. From now on, with the introduction of the Juicy Burger, this restaurant will be filled with guests. Michael opened the door and declared silently. Chapter 58 You are listening at NovelFull.audio As soon as Michael opened the door, a blonde with short hair who was waiting outside the restaurant immediately raised his head and inquired, Boss Mike, I heard that you have a new dish. My shop is a bit busy, but I have already informed my staff to cover my duties for me, while I rush here to try the new dish. That's right, but today we are only having a trial sale. Michael smiled and replied. This young man is named Pluto Mushin, 1, 27.28. He owes a shop in Arden Plaza, and sells a type of incense that was imported from the human capital, Luo C City. This incense is very popular with the ladies who love the various scents that the incense produced. His shop was doing so well that he hired five staff to man the shop. Yesterday morning, he happened to chance across the restaurant. Seeing the exterior facade, he was impressed and curious and decided to come in to take a look. After having a plate of Yang Zhou fried rice, he felt as if his life is now completed. He returned here for lunch and dinner as well. Pluto even brought two bosses who own the shop beside his to come here for dinner. This morning he did not come. But he had probably heard of the new dish from his friends, and immediately queued up outside the restaurant, hoping to try the new dish. Then first give me one portion of the new dish. But what is this new dish? Pluto entered the restaurant and asked. It is Juicy Hamburger. Michael smiled as he replied. Juicy Hamburger. What is that? 
Plutor frowned. Hamburger in Chinese reads as meat in bun, too, Plutor knows what is meat and bun, but he had never tried these two things together before. Could these two things taste good when combined together? Plutor thought of the dish, Yang Zhou fried rice, and had inquired about the name of the dish before. But Michael only told him that Yang Zhou is a very beautiful place. Looks like this boss Mike had a weird habit of giving the dishes that he made weird names. Although he does not like the name of these dishes, Plutor acknowledges that Michael is an excellent chef and a rare culinary talent. Talents are often weirdos, and Plutor could accept the funny names of the dish. He found himself a seat. All right, please wait a moment. Michael nodded his head, enter the kitchen. As he passed by the counter, he saw Amy was stroking the fur on the back of the tabby kitten, and seemed to enjoy the feel of its soft, smooth fur. As expected, having a cat as a companion is really infectious, you could not resist patting or stroking it in delight. This is especially so for a kitten that is so adorable. Even Amy could not resist its allure. Michael had already prepared what he needs for the lunchtime crowd earlier. He picked up a freshly baked wit bun from the oven, cut it in the middle, add the mince meat into it, and added some sauce. Then he wrapped it in a plastic wrapper, and passed it to Plutor, your juicy hamburger. Oh, it smells incredible. As soon as Plutor took the hamburger, he was captivated by the succulent smell of the meat. This smell is much more intense than the Yang Zhou fried rice, and he gulped and swallowed hard. Plutor was too busy in the morning and he did not have any breakfast yet. The plastic wrapper is very clear and neat, and there is even a figure of a half-dot-elf girl on it. Plutor recalled that Michael had a very cute and adorable half-dot-elf daughter. Never did he expect that Michael Michael would dare to use her figure to promote his business. This is someone bold, and interesting. He thought that Michael is a great father. As a boss himself, Plutor often interacts with other races, and understood the social stigma that most half-dot-breeds face. Plutor is a merchant himself and could understand Michael's thought. The young half-dot-elf lady is really adorable, and most, if not all of the guests love and like her. But it seemed that she is not here today. Plutor caught another whiff of the tempting aroma of the hamburger and he snapped back from his thoughts and focus on the present. He looked at the contents of the bag. The soft, white bun was spilt in the middle, and the meat with the inviting aroma was inserted there. Hamburger seemed to be a valid description of this dish, too. But is it really juicy? Plutor was skeptical, but he could not resist trying the thing called a juicy hamburger. The allure of the smell was too tempting, and he took a large bite. The scrumptious taste of the meat and the bun immediately unleashed its explosive flavor in his mouth. The juices of the meat flowed out, teased his taste buds, and leave them begging for more. The feeling is so satisfying. That this taste is unlike the mild taste of Yang Zhou fried rice and is more exciting. To compare them is like comparing the differences between drinking water from an oasis and drinking a fiery wine. The fiery feeling pours down his throat and immediately invigorated his blood. Arrgh! Plutor closed his eyes as he enjoyed the wild rush, and could not help groaning in bliss. His blood was gushy, plussing throughout his body, and his heart was beating so quickly. It reminds him of the first time when he confessed his love to his first love. That time, his heart was pounding away like now, like now, and his blood was flowing wildly like this as well. For a moment, he just stood there as he reminisced about the past and examined his life. Every day, Plutor would meet and greet all kinds of races, and always a smile. He had forgotten what it is likely to truly smile in joy. Right now, he finally found the real, genuine smile of his that he thought was lost long ago. This taste, it lightens the heart, and makes one smile in delight. Ever since he had come to the city of sin, Plutor had endured, saved, kneeled, cried, lost, and won. In the end, he finally managed to open a shop of his own in the city of sin. In the blink of an eye, a decade had passed. 
His memories of his hometown are becoming more and more blurry. These few years, he had done well, and had forgotten the dreams of his past. When Plutor first set foot in the city of Sin and saw the massive ranges of shops in Arden Plaza, he swore that he will open at least ten shops here, and become a successful merchant. After Finisher, plussing the hamburger, Plutor suddenly raised his head and looked at Michael, and unexpectedly said, Boss Mike, I think it is time for me to open a second branch of my business. That's great. Michael smiled and nodded his head. Although he had no idea why his guest will suddenly say tell him about his expansion plans, Michael liked the idea that the hamburger had inspired him to do more. One more order of the juicy hamburger, please. I believe that this fine delicacy will become popular in the city of Sin. Pluto smiled as he placed another order. All right, please wait a moment, Michael nodded his head and entered the kitchen to prepare another hamburger. After he had eaten the second hamburger, Pluto took out the took out the money from his money pouch. He looked at Michael as he inquired, Boss Mike, I want to order five hamburgers for takeaway, so that my colleagues can try it as well. May I do that? Today is just a trial sale. One person is limited to three hamburgers. Michael rejected his offer. To Michael, the trial sale is to attract more people to buy, and to prepare for the main sale tomorrow. Today, he does not have a lot of juicy hamburgers to sell. Then give me one burger, take away, please. One of the kid's father had passed away, and he seemed inconsolable. I hope that the food will give him the courage and strength he needs to stand up again. Pluto nodded his head and did not insist. As a merchant himself, he had conducted some trial sales before for new products to judge the demand for the new product. Therefore, he understood why Michael insist on this rule. Pluto left shortly with the hamburger. Michael kept the gold coins. Then a new customer entered the restaurant and the first thing he said was, Boss Mike, did you have a new dish? What is the thing that the previous customer was carrying in his hand? It smells heavenly. Note. 1. Pu Luo Air. Mu Shan. In Chinese. Pluto or Mushan, the pronunciation is similar. 2. The juicy hamburger in Chinese is, meat in bun. 3. Thank you for reading this chapter at Prosperous Food Com. I had a whopper at Burger King today as all these translations about juicy hamburger made me crave for one. It is not juicy at all. The meat patty is so thin. I like the greens on it although. And no, I could not finish it. It is too big. I am still sick and did not have my usual big appetite either. Sigh. Oh, for a real juicy hamburger. Chapter 59 You are listening at NovelFull.audio As soon as Michael opened the door, a blonde with short hair who was waiting outside the restaurant immediately raised his head and inquired, Boss Mike, I heard that you have a new dish. My shop is a bit busy, but I have already informed my staff to cover my duties for me, while I rush here to try the new dish. That's right, but today we are only having a trial sale. Michael smiled and replied. This young man is named Pluto Mushin, 1, 27.28. He owes a shop in Arden Plaza, and sells a type of incense that was imported from the human capital, Luo C City. This incense is very popular with the ladies who love the various scents that the incense produced. His shop was doing so well that he hired five staff to man the shop. Yesterday morning, he happened to chance across the restaurant. Seeing the exterior facade, he was impressed and curious and decided to come in to take a look. After having a plate of Yang Zhou fried rice, he felt as if his life is now completed. He returned here for lunch and dinner as well. Pluto even brought two bosses who own the shop beside his to come here for dinner. This morning he did not come. But he had probably heard of the new dish from his friends, and immediately queued up outside the restaurant, hoping to try the new dish. Then first give me one portion of the new dish. But what is this new dish? Pluto entered the restaurant and asked. It is juicy hamburger. Michael smiled as he replied. Juicy hamburger. 
What is that? Plutor frowned. Hamburger in Chinese reads as, meat in bun, too, Plutor knows what is meat and bun, but he had never tried these two things together before. Could these two things taste good when combined together? Plutor thought of the dish. Yang Zhou fried rice, and had inquired about the name of the dish before. But Michael only told him that Yang Zhou is a very beautiful place. Looks like this boss Mike had a weird habit of giving the dishes that he made weird names. Although he does not like the name of these dishes, Pluto acknowledges that Michael is an excellent chef and a rare culinary talent. Talents are often weirdos, and Pluto could accept the funny names of the dish. He found himself a seat. All right, please wait a moment. Michael nodded his head, enter the kitchen. As he passed by the counter, he saw Amy was stroking the fur on the back of the tabby kitten, and seemed to enjoy the feel of its soft, smooth fur. As expected, having a cat as a companion is really infectious, you could not resist patting or stroking it in delight. This is especially so for a kitten that is so adorable. Even Amy could not resist its allure. Michael had already prepared what he needs for the lunchtime crowd earlier. He picked up a freshly baked wit bun from the oven, cut it in the middle, add the mince meat into it, and added some sauce. Then he wrapped it in a plastic wrapper, and passed it to Plutor, your juicy hamburger. Oh, it smells incredible. As soon as Plutor took the hamburger, he was captivated by the succulent smell of the meat. This smell is much more intense than the Yang Zhou fried rice, and he gulped and swallowed hard. Pluto was too busy in the morning and he did not have any breakfast yet. The plastic wrapper is very clear and neat, and there is even a figure of a half-dot-elf girl on it. Pluto recalled that Michael had a very cute and adorable half-dot-elf daughter. Never did he expect that Michael Michael would dare to use her figure to promote his business. This is someone bold, and interesting. He thought that Michael is a great father. As a boss himself, Pluto often interacts with other races, and understood the social stigma that most half-dot-breeds face. Pluto is a merchant himself and could understand Michael's thought. The young half-dot-elf lady is really adorable, and most, if not all of the guests love and like her. But it seemed that she is not here today. Pluto caught another whiff of the tempting aroma of the hamburger and he snapped back from his thoughts and focus on the present. He looked at the contents of the bag. The soft, white bun was spilt in the middle, and the meat with the inviting aroma was inserted there. Hamburger seemed to be a valid description of this dish, too. But is it really juicy? Pluto was skeptical, but he could not resist trying the thing called a juicy hamburger. The allure of the smell was too tempting, and he took a large bite. The scrumptious taste of the meat and the bun immediately unleashed its explosive flavor in his mouth. The juices of the meat flowed out, teased his taste buds, and leave them begging for more. The feeling is so satisfying. This taste is unlike the mild taste of Yang Zhou fried rice and is more exciting. To compare them is like comparing the differences between drinking water from an oasis and drinking a fiery wine. The fiery feeling pours down his throat and immediately invigorated his blood. R. Pluto closed his eyes as he enjoyed the wild rush, and could not help groaning in bliss. His blood was gushy, plussing throughout his body, and his heart was beating so quickly. It reminds him of the first time when he confessed his love to his first love. That time, his heart was pounding away like now, like now, and his blood was flowing wildly like this as well. For a moment, he just stood there as he reminisced about the past and examined his life. Every day, Pluto would meet and greet all kinds of races, and always a smile. He had forgotten what it is likely to truly smile in joy. Right now, he finally found the real, genuine smile of his that he thought was lost long ago. This taste, it lightens the heart, and makes one smile in delight. Ever since he had come to the city of sin, Pluto had endured, saved, kneeled, cried, lost, and won. In the end, he finally managed to open a shop of his own in the city of sin. In the blink of an eye, a decade had passed. 
his memories of his hometown are becoming more and more blurry. These few years, he had done well, and had forgotten the dreams of his past. When Plutoer first set foot in the city of Sin and saw the massive ranges of shops in Arden Plaza, he swore that he will open at least ten shops here, and become a successful merchant. After Finisher, plussing the hamburger, Plutoer suddenly raised his head and looked at Michael, and unexpectedly said, Boss Mike, I think it is time for me to open a second branch of my business. That's great. Michael smiled and nodded his head. Although he had no idea why his guest will suddenly say tell him about his expansion plans, Michael liked the idea that the hamburger had inspired him to do more. One more order of the juicy hamburger, please. I believe that this fine delicacy will become popular in the city of Sin. Plutoer smiled as he placed another order. All right, please wait a moment, Michael nodded his head and entered the kitchen to prepare another hamburger. After he had eaten the second hamburger, Plutoer took out the took out the money from his money pouch. He looked at Michael as he inquired, Boss Mike, I want to order five hamburgers for takeaway, so that my colleagues can try it as well. May I do that? Today is just a trial sale. One person is limited to three hamburgers. Michael rejected his offer. To Michael, the trial sale is to attract more people to buy, and to prepare for the main sale tomorrow. Today, he does not have a lot of juicy hamburgers to sell. Then give me one burger, take away, please. One of the kid's father had passed away, and he seemed inconsolable. I hope that the food will give him the courage and strength he needs to stand up again. Plutoer nodded his head and did not insist. As a merchant himself, he had conducted some trial sales before for new products to judge the demand for the new product. Therefore, he understood why Michael insist on this rule. Pluto left shortly with the hamburger. Michael kept the gold coins. Then a new customer entered the restaurant and the first thing he said was, Boss Mike, did you have a new dish? What is the thing that the previous customer was carrying in his hand? It smells heavenly. Note. 1. Pu Luo Air. Mu Shan. In Chinese. Pluto or Mushan, the pronunciation is similar. 2. The juicy hamburger in Chinese is, meat in bun. 3. Thank you for reading this chapter at Prosperous Food Com, I had a whopper at Burger King today as all these translations about juicy hamburger made me crave for one. It is not juicy at all. The meat patty is so thin. I like the greens on it although. And no, I could not finish it. It is too big. I am still sick and did not have my usual big appetite either. Sigh. Oh, for a real juicy hamburger. Chapter 60 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The 30-plus trial hamburgers that Michael had prepared for lunch were quickly sold out. Many customers clamored for more, and asked Michael to cook more. But Michael really had no choice. He had only prepared so many ingredients. He could only use the first-come-first-serve approach. For making each juicy hamburger requires him to prepare two hours in advance. It needs time to knead the dough, and time to stew the meat. It is not like Yang Zhou fried rice, that could be instantly cooked with minimum preparations. And many guests love the design of the hamburger wrapper. Some of them wanted to take the wrapper to used as a money pouch. The figure of the half-dot-elf girl is very adorable, and they could not bear to discard the wrapper. This made Amy dizzy with happiness. That night, there are even more customers than usual. The guests raved about the Yang Zhou fried rice, and the hamburger that Michael made. This style of cooking is fresh and unique, and the taste is superb. It knocked the socks off them and bowled them over with its unique taste and pleasant after effects. Although the price of the food is quite expensive, there is no lack of wealthy people in the city of Sin. Spending a few gold coins to dine in luxury is not something that these well dot to dot do people will fret over. Sorry, all hamburgers are sold out for today. Tomorrow, we will be selling the hamburgers in larger quantities. 
but because this product needs a long time to prepare, therefore, there is a limited quantity available in every mealtime. If you desire to eat it, you can come here earlier tomorrow to try your luck. Michael smiled as he sees the last customer out of the restaurant. Then he flipped the sign to, we are closed, Ad heaved a sigh of relief. Although he had eaten a plate of fried rice and a hamburger, he still exhausted after a hard day's work. Today, all 90 hamburgers that he had prepared were sold out. Because the hamburger is a new product, it is more popular, and he sold less fried rice than usual. Still, he sold 50-plus plates of fried rice and earned 360-plus gold coins in profits. Tomorrow morning, he needs to wake up extra early to knead the dough. In this way, he can make more hamburgers. After all, he needs to sell 1,000 hamburgers to unlock the soya bean curd. Right now, as the boss of the restaurant selling soya bean curd, Michael decided to stay away from the war of sweet versus savory soya bean curd and be neutral about it. Still, Michael was curious if this world will also be split into two factions like that on Earth, one faction for sweet, another faction for the savory flavor. If they could get along well, all is good. At most, they should end up with verbal arguments right. Oh, he had forgotten that in this world, might makes right. Then it is highly likely that fights will break out between the two factions. Maybe Michael needs to create a fighting arena in front of the shop. Let's call this arena, War Between Sweet and Savory. He reckoned that the people in each faction will challenge the people in the other faction daily. Michael was lost in his daydreams. Papa, you must be tried. I will help you massage your shoulders. Amy carried ugly ducking in her hand, and said, interrupting his thoughts. Meow meow. Ugly duckling meowed twice, as if it agreed with Amy's words. Michael looked at the two adorable children and stroked Amy's head. Then he smiled and shook his head, it is all right. Papa is not tired. You can sit for a while. If you are tired, you may go up and bathe first, then go to sleep. No, today I want to wait for Papa. We can go to sleep together. Amy shook her head. She stroked Ugly Duckling's head, and asked, Isn't that right, Ugly Duckling? Meow. Ugly Duckling yawned. It may be nodding its head, but it seems to be unwilling. All right, then I will be quick about it. Michael smiled and cleared the plates, wiped the table and mopped the floor. It took him half an hour to clean the place. Amy, who was waiting on a stool next to the counter is almost asleep. Ugly Duckling was nestled in her arms and was already sound asleep. Michael removed his apron, dried his hand, and stroked Amy's head as he gently informed her, place the ugly duckling into the basket so that it may sleep. Then we go upstairs and sleep. N. Amy nodded her head. Meow, ugly duckling seemed to have overheard Michael's words. It raised its head and looked at Michael with unhappiness. Then it extends its claws as it hangs on to Amy's clothes, and shook its head. It seemed to indicate that it is unwilling to get down from Amy's hug. Ugly duckling, no. Papa says that you must sleep there. Amy shook her head and grabbed easily. She chided it, also, you are so ugly. What if I woke up in the middle of the night and was frightened by your looks? I may kick you off the bed. Michael could not help laughing. Amy is natural talent and does not need him to teach her how to best employ her acidic tongue. Meow meow dot. Ugly duckling opened its mouth to protest, and want to say that it is not ugly at all. But it was placed into the basket by Amy. Amy stood up, and wave it good night, ugly duckling, you must be obedient and go to sleep. If you are nice, tomorrow morning, I will bring out to play. Saying this, she held Michael's hand and is ready to go upstairs with him. Meow 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 dot. Ugly duckling immediately sits up from the basket and hang on one side of the basket. It cried out pitifully, as if it is an abandoned kitten. Papa, ugly duckling seemed to be very scared. Can we bring her upstairs? I try not to kick it out of the bed. 
Hearing the pitiful cries, Amy's heart softened and she asked Michael while glancing at ugly duckling that looked as if it is crying. Michael looked at the big eyes of the pitiful ugly duckling, then he looked at Amy's big eyes. The two pairs of eyes are super adorable adorable and contain four times the cuteness power. He is powerless to resist, and could only nod his head in resignation, all right, you may bring it upstairs. Amy smiled, and immediately went to pick up Ugly Duckling from the basket. She looked very fierce as she scolded Ugly Duckling, I give in this time, but you must cover your face when you sleep so that you will not frighten me. Meow meow dot. Ugly Duckling happily cried out, and finds a comfortable spot to nestle in Amy's arm. Then it closed its eyes with satisfaction. After they have gone upstairs, Amy placed the sleeping ugly duckling on a side of the bed, and make sure that its head was resting on a pillow. Then went to take a bath with Michael. Michael helped Amy to bathe, and purchase one more purple color pajamas from the system. After her hair was blow dot dry, he carried her to the bed. As soon as Amy lay down, ugly duckling immediately snuggled into her arms. So heavy. Amy pushed it away, yawned and greeted Michael, Papa, good night. Good night. Michael stroked Amy's hair, and Amy was soon sound asleep. Ugly Duckling did not give up, and tried to snuggle up to Amy again. This kitten really loves hugs. Michael smiled and shook his head. He placed the blanket over them, turned off the lights, and took his pajamas as he went to the bathroom to bathe. System, I feel that our restaurant needs a dish that could hold the fort. Regardless if it is Yang Zhou fried rice or hamburgers, it lacks the feeling of a speciality. After bathing, Michael lies on the bed and try communicating with the system. Chapter 60 The queue outside the restaurant Here You Go, the second part of the Double Digest. This extra chapter is due to the sponsorship plus P of Dan Wu. Remember to thank Dan Wu if you like the double digest, won't you? Yang Zhou fried rice is nice, and so is the hamburger. But for someone like Michael who is used to dining at Michelin starred restaurant, there seemed to be something missing when he eats these two dishes. Although there is a new task that can unlock the soya bean curd, Michael thought that he would consult the system to see if he could unlock one or two speciality dishes. The system was silent for a while, then it replied, hidden task unlocked. To have 1,000 unique customers in the restaurant. Rewards. Unlock, Huang Yu Chicken Rice. If the task is not completed within 15 days, penalty. Constitution.0.5. Progress. 155-1000 inch, this means that he had to attract 1,000 different customers within 15 days. Michael frowned. This task is a lot harder than selling 1,000 hamburgers. After all, each customer can eat many hamburgers, and returning customers can purchase it again, increasing the number of hamburgers sold. In the span of a few days, it is possible to sell over 10 hamburgers per person. But 1,000 different customers is a different story. If this could be achieved, then it will fill the restaurant with customers all the time. Ever since the restaurant had opened, there are only 155 unique customers. If he could not complete this task, he still has a penalty. This really sucks. What really sucks? What Michael is more worried about is not because he does not have enough business. Rather, he was worried that the frequent customers will come back too often, and the new guests could not try the food he made. After all, he could only make a limited quantity of hamburgers each day. If this happened, the pace of attracting new customers will be slowed. To achieve this task, it seemed like customers who dine in the restaurant would be the key. Therefore, I should limit the number of takeaway for a short while. It is best for me if I can achieve a certain degree of publicity, while meeting the requirements of the guests that choose to dine here. Michael thought. When he thought of the rewards, Huang Yu Chicken Rice, his eyes lit up. Huang Yu Chicken Rice, is one of the dishes named as, Three Big Feasts, alongside the Lan's Hao Ramen, Shashian Street Snacks. Michael had eaten, Huang Yu Chicken Rice, before. 
Although he did criticize these dish using his sharp acidic tongue, the taste is really superb. The chicken meat is very tender and the gravy is really good. After eating the chicken, you can pour the rice into the gravy and mix it. This is another way to enjoy the dish. Right now, he really regrets his harsh words and criticisms, especially when he had to cook to the standards that he had set. It will take a long time in that hellish training grounds to meet these impossible standards. Sai, even if he unlocked the food, he reckoned that he will be locked in that training grounds for at least a few hundred days. Karma is really a bitch. Michael ranted for a while. Slowly, he drifted off to sleep. The next morning, Michael was awakened by Amy's frantic cries. He turned on the bedside light and sat up immediately. What happened? Amy was sitting on the bed and looks as if she had just woke up. She rubbed her sleepy eyes and looked around and asked Michael, Papa, where is ugly duckling? E. Michael was stunned. Last night, when he fell asleep, ugly duckling was also sound asleep as it snuggled into Amy's arms. Meow. Dot. At this time, a cry suddenly sounded out from under the bed. Amy and Michael both looked under the bed. They had no clue when Ugly Duckling had fallen over. But the way it looks at Amy is like a wife that was kicked off the bed by her husband, and it looks very poor and annoyed. Pooey, Amy broke out into peals of laughter. She held on to the bed railings and asked, Ugly Duckling, don't tell me I push you off the bed, Ugly Duckling seemed to understand human speech and nodded its eye. It looked even more miserable. It sat up and reached out it with front paws, as if it is begging for a hug. Michael also smiled. Poor ugly duckling. I had already informed you that you may be tossed out of the bed by me, but you refuse to believe me. Next time, you better sleep in your basket. Amy shrugged her shoulders. Then she asked Michael, Papa, is it time for us to wake up yet? She yawned. It is still early that I s still early. You and ugly duckling sleep for a while morning. I need to get the ingredients ready so that I can sell them for breakfast. Michael looked at the time on the clock. It is now 4.50 a.m. in the morning. He groaned and crawled out the bed, then reached out and grabbed ugly duckling and placed it back on Amy's bed. All right, then I sleep for a while more. Amy nodded her head, and pulled the blanket over herself and covered Ugly Duckling. Then she warned, Ugly Duckling, you are not allowed to scratch my clothes. This is the new pajamas that Papa had purchased for me. If you dare to scratch and make a hole in it, you will be banned from sleeping on my bed forever. Meow, Ugly Duckling stopped struggling, and nodded its head. Then it lies there and closed its eyes. Good duck. Amy nodded her head in satisfaction, and lie down. She quickly closed her eyes and fell into a deep sleep. Michael smiled as he covered Amy properly with the blanket, and covered Ugly Duckling as well. It is very young and it is important the kitten does not catch a cold. After washi, plussing up, bathing and changing, Michael went down to prepare the ingredients. This morning, he had prepared 64 portions of hamburger. He reckoned that once he finished selling all these hamburgers, the morning business hours would be over. At about 7 a.m. in the morning, Michael woke Amy up. While Amy was washy, plussing up, she also tried to brush Ugly Duckling's teeth. Michael laughed as he explained for a while before she gives up. But not before she had brushed Ugly Duckling's teeth a few times. Right now, I will let you off the hook. But when your teeth get bigger, I will brush them as well. Amy looked at Ugly Duckling, who was gargling some water, and said as she brushed her teeth. Ugly Duckling looked at the toothbrush and toothpaste in Amy's mouth, and slowly retreated towards the door of the washroom. It does not like the taste. They had run out of goat's milk that they had purchased yesterday. He could only purchase it again after the morning business hours. Therefore, Poor Ugly Duckling could only watch on as Amy and Michael enjoyed the juicy hamburger and fried rice. Its eyes were sure, plus Ning, but no one fed it. It could only use its paw to cover its eyes in dismay. 
Ugly duckling, I see your eye peering through your claws. If you want to watch you can watch all you like. But you may not eat anything. Amy happily bit into her hamburger and grinned as she teased Ugly Duckling. Ugly Duckling could only put its paws down as it looked on in resignation. It felt so poor, being the odd one out without any breakfast. Michael just grinned and shook his head. After their breakfast, at around 7.30 a.m. in the morning, he opened the restaurant for business. Today, Moby is the first one who queued outside the restaurant as usual. But behind him, there are 4.5 people queuing up as well. Seeing Michael opening the shop for business, their eyes lit up and they enthusiastically greeted Boss Mike. 